Hey hockey player, in this video I'm going to run you through a lower body workout taken directly from phase two of our 2020 in-season hockey training program. Now during the in-season you don't have the luxury of time like you do in the off-season. So instead of setting one goal per workout, we have to set many goals per workout in order to check all the boxes to keep you strong and explosive all in-season long. What you're about to discover is the way in which I've set up the first training block or the first two phases of the end season so that you can train strength, hypertrophy, prehabilitation, power output, and conditioning all within the same session. How it's going to work is we're going to be using what's known as the pre-fatigue method. The workout is designed in a way that you're going to perform a tri-set and then another tri-set and then a strength specific movement and finished off with a prehabilitation movement. The two triceps are in place to provide a lot of anaerobic conditioning stimulus for the body, but do it in a resistance training way so that we're still strengthening the muscles, strengthening the connective tissue, strengthening the tendons and ligaments to keep you injury free, but keeping a high pace so that you get that conditioning stimulus you need throughout the season that you're just simply not going to get in a practice. We're checking a lot of boxes already, but here is where the pre-fatigue method truly kicks in because once you've done a tricep, all lower body movements, and then another tricep, all lower body movement, and then finally move on to your strength movement. This strength movement, you are entering it in a pre-fatigue state because you've already done six different lower body exercises. This is actually an advantage because the nervous system is already activated and you're going to be able to recruit a lot more high threshold muscle fibers without needing to put a giant heavy weight on your back because the intensity from a muscle's perspective is going to be identical. Muscles don't know weight. Muscles only know tension. So if we pre-fatigue them dramatically before you move into a very difficult strength exercise, which for this workout is going to be the Nordic hamstring curl, you are going to be being able to recruit all of those muscle fibers in the lower back, the glute, and the hamstrings like the Nordic hamstring curl does, but do it without a heavy load. Why is that beneficial? Because you don't want to train with really heavy loads during the season because I want your joints feeling good and fresh all in season long and you don't do that by doing gigantic lifts within your training. So with the pre-fatigue method, we've got anaerobic conditioning coming in from the triceps. We've got our power development coming in from the triceps. We got our strength development and hypertrophy development coming in from that tough movement, utilizing the pre-fatigue method. And then we're going to finish off with what's known as prehabilitation in that you do prehab exercises so that you don't have to do rehab exercises. These are the ones that keep you injury free. Got it? Good. Let's get into it. Kicking this workout off, we are going to be doing our first tri set, which is a combination of Russian step ups, archer squats, and double leg tuck jumps. The first exercise being the Russian step ups, and what we're going to do here is 10 reps per side. But I want you to complete all 10 reps on your first leg before moving to your second leg. Meaning, this is not an alternating step up pattern. You want to do all at one leg before moving to the next. The Russian step up is just an overall great exercise for the in season because you're loading the hamstrings, the glutes, and the quadriceps all at once. But the way in which it loads the quadriceps really helps offset certain strength imbalances that are very common in hockey players during the season. Not to mention, it's just overall great dynamic movement pattern for strength and hypertrophy as well. Keep a great posture like you see Kevin having here. Ensure that you bring that knee all the way up and you'll be doing just great with this exercise. Up next in this triset, we have the archer squat. Now the archer squat is an excellent lateral power and strength exercise. What you're gonna do is do 10 reps per side, but unlike the Russian step up, this time I want you alternating back and forth, just like you see Kevin doing here. Making sure you got a good posture, making sure your chest is out, making sure your arms are straight out in front of you. Do 10 reps per side in an alternating fashion, and you are going to get the most 
out of it. This is one that I absolutely love during the in season, primarily due to its low impact nature. There's a lot of lateral power and strength movements out there, but the archer squat has you keep your feet planted the entire set. So you're not getting that impact force on your ankle, knee, or hip as you would if you're doing some flying dynamic movement. The archer squat keeps you in one place and trains all of the muscle systems and coordination patterns that you need strong and powerful in your skating out in the ice. Perform 10 per side here, go as low as you can on every single rep and you're gonna do just great. Finishing off the first try set, you are going to be doing the double leg tuck jump. I want you to jump as high as possible for five total reps here. Vertical power based exercises, when you look at the biomechanics of skating and you just review the sports science literature on the topic, we know vertical power based exercises are excellent for explosive starting speed and acceleration. So if you want to explode out of the gates out in the ice and reach your top speed in as few strides as possible, vertical power based movements is where it's at and few do it any better than the double leg tuck jump. Bring your knees up to your chest. Jump as high as you can, just like you see Kevin doing here. Don't stick the landing and wait around. When you're doing these five jumps, it should be boom, 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 boom. Go as high as you can. Get that hang time, and you are going to get a ton out of this movement. Now that we finished our first tri set, it's time to move on to the second tri set, which is a combination of single leg hip thrusts, towel leg curls, and skater bounds. First up, we've got our single leg hip thrust. Now on this one, we're gonna be doing 10 reps per side. And even though we're supine, meaning we're lying on the floor, this is a horizontal power-based exercise because our hips are moving in a horizontal pattern straight up towards the ceiling. Now, previously we talked about the tuck jumps being vertical power based and they're excellent for starting speed and acceleration, whereas horizontal power based exercises like the single leg hip thrust, these are great for top speed and deceleration. So this is where you're gonna see things kick in such as when you're already out at top speed out in the ice, you being able to push that barrier even further and as well as the improvements in deceleration are going to manifest the, them Himself in your agility, so your stop start speed out in the ice. It also doesn't hurt that the single leg hip thrust hits what I call the three amigos of injury prevention for hockey players. That is your hamstrings, glutes, and paraspinals. When you can get those strong and stable, you are going to be preventing a ton of the common hockey injuries that occur in the groin, the knees, and the hips. We all know somebody who runs into these issues during the season, and if you keep up with these movements, that is not going to be you. Hit 10 reps per side with the single leg hip thrust. Up next in this tri set, we have the towel leg curls. You're gonna be doing 10 reps here with both legs moving at the same time. And you see Kevin, he's got a towel under each foot. This is the best way to perform this exercise. Don't use one long towel. It is best to use two separate ones and ideally on some form of a slick surface. If you've got some tiles in your house or if you've got just a really smooth floor or if you have some fake ice at your house, all of these things will work well because you want the ground to be somewhat slick as you drag your heels towards your bum and extend your hips. That's the technique that we want to see here. That slow drag of the heels towards your bum and an extension of the hips. This trains the hamstrings in a very difficult and very effective way. The hamstrings have two primary functions, hip extension and knee flexion. We had the hamstrings training hip extension in the hip thrust, but in order to get a complete training effect, it's important that we also train knee flexion as well to offset some of the structural imbalances that hockey players run into during the season, but also just to take your performance to the next level. Perform 10 very controlled reps here. 
finishing off our second tricep, we are going to be doing this skater bounds. Now, if you're paying attention, you're gonna notice we finish each tricep with the most explosive movement of the three exercises. The first one we finish with the double leg tuck jump for vertical power, and in this second tricep, we are finishing it with the king of lateral power-based exercises, which is the skater bound. What I want you to do is three jumps per side here and move for both height and distance. We want both. We really want to exemplify that lateral power explosiveness with this movement because there's only two ways that you can get faster out in the ice. You look at all the sports science literature in the world and it boils down to two different ways how you can improve your speed. Either you improve your stride length or you improve your stride frequency. Everything you do with your training is utilizing methods to either get that longer triple extension at the hip, knee, and ankle for your stride length, or improve the speed at which you can take a stride by bringing up your stride frequency. The skater bounds help with both of these. It helps with that stride length, but also the speed of your stride return so that your stride frequency is up another level as well. This leads to an athlete that's got better stride length, more stride frequency, and is just an all round better skater. There's no more important time to keep up this type of activity than during the season where performance is the number one most important goal of any hockey player's dry land training program. Do these three per side as explosive as possible, and then you've wrapped up this second tricep. Up next, we have the Nordic hamstring curl. This is the strength-based movement part of the workout now. We've got the two triceps already behind us, and now it's time for us to go all in on one of the hardest hamstring exercises in the game. Look, you don't need fancy machines. You don't need all kinds of weight in order to train the hamstrings in an extremely intense way for functional hockey performance. And anybody who's ever tried a Nordic hamstring curl can echo that statement for me as well. This is a very difficult exercise, and it's actually a great teaching opportunity for me here to illustrate how a movement can be functionally specific for hockey performance and yet not look like actual hockey at all. People have this obsession with only one aspect of sport specificity in program design, that one aspect being the movement pattern. People think everything that you do with your dry land training or in the gym needs to look like stick handling or look like a shot or look like skating. And although they're well-intentioned, it's just simply an incomplete view as to what sport-specific training really is because you have to consider energy systems. You have to consider contraction tempos. You have to consider joint angles. You have to consider force vectors. There's so many different aspects that illustrate whether or not an exercise is going to be beneficial for hockey players or not. And the Nordic hamstring curl looks nothing like hockey, and yet it trains active hamstring stiffness. And this is something I've been doing for the hockey players here at Hockey Training for years, and yet only now is the research starting to catch up in how effective this is for both speed but also injury prevention. This active hamstring stiffness really protects you from one of the most injury prone aspects of hockey, and that is the landing phase. In that, when you bring your stride back in, so you've gone from full extension and you're bringing it back in, that landing phase before you take the next stride is when the groin is going to get blown up, when the knee is going to get blown up, when you're going to get a hamstring strain. And that's because your hamstring is trying to do two things at once. It's trying to do both knee flexion and hip extension at the exact same time. Now, this is okay provided you have enough decelerative hamstring strength to allow that active stiffness to occur. Long story short, and to make it simple, this gives you the armor you need to skate as fast as you want out in the ice and not run into the same injury risk that other players would if they're not doing this type of movement. Keep a good posture, 
control your tempo on the way down. Go as slow as possible. Push yourself up with your arms if you need to. You can get a partner to hold your feet down. Make sure your toes are pointed toward the ground and not straight backwards. There's other ways to do this as well. If you can get your feet under a barbell, uh, get your feet under a lat pull-down machine, whatever it is, partner or apparatus holding your feet down, get this movement done. Control it on the way down. It'll be one of the best things you do for injury prevention and speed out in the ice. Moving on to the last exercise of this workout is the Copenhagen side plank. What I want you to do is two sets of 20 seconds per side. Make sure you get that elbow right under your shoulder like you see Kevin doing here. Bring your pelvis up off the ground, but keep it in line with your body so it's not too far up or it's also not sagging low. It's right straight across and you've got your upper foot up on a chair or a bench or something that is in line with the height of where your shoulder is as well. This is how you perform the Copenhagen side plank, and this is where what I referred to as prehabilitation comes into play. We want to do prehab exercises so that we don't have to do injury rehab exercises. We do movements to make sure we never get hurt in the first place, and there's no more important time to do that than during the end season. And guess what? The Copenhagen side plank, yes, it trains the core very effectively, but the reason why I love it so much is is an extremely effective body weight only way to strengthen your adductors. Why is that so important to me and you? Well, one study out of the American Journal of Clinical Sports Medicine found that professional hockey players were 17 times more likely to sustain a groin injury if their adductor strength was less than 80% of their abductor strength. Adductor brings your legs inwards, abductor brings your legs outwards. To repeat that again, 17 times more likely to sustain a groin injury if your adductors aren't at least 80% as strong as your abductors. How many hockey players do you know have quote unquote pulled their groin? Because I know a ton of them. Now, how many hockey players do you know do the Copenhagen side plank? because I don't know a lot of them. The Copenhagen side plank is going to keep you away from injury and keep you kicking butt on the ice. Hey, if you want to dominate all in season long and use unique hockey specific methods just like this to keep you strong and explosive, then listen up because the brand new 2020 in season hockey training programs are now live. Head on over to hockeytraining.com slash let's go and get instant access to the most advanced in-season hockey training programs available today. Look, the in-season is way different than the off-season and what you saw in this video is just a small taste of all the boxes that you need to check to truly unlock your performance this year. Click on the link in the description below or head on over to hockeytraining.com slash let's go and let's take you to the next level.